Morgana is a young witch. She enters her new school. This academy is for mystical beings only. Classmates welcome Morgana with a cake, but one of the students is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy is the only one who looks like a human, and since this school doesn't accept humans, he doesn't belong here. Morgana is checking in at the student dormitory. She can choose one of three roommates. The first option is Wanda. She's a werewolf. The second choice is Elle. She's a vampire. And this is Zelda. She's also a witch. Can you help Morgana make the right choice? Wanda's room is too cluttered and all the textiles are torn. It will be uncomfortable to live with her. And Zelda has a book called How to Curse Your Roommate on her shelf. That's why Morgana should choose L. Morgana enters the library and explores the shelves with books and golden cups. She heard rumors about a secret passage to a hidden part of the library. Can you help Morgana find it? All the stuff on this wall is equally covered with dust and spiderwebs. But take a closer look at this golden cup. According to the date engraving, it's the oldest cup on the shelf, but it still looks shinier than the others. Suspicious. So Morgana should try to move it. A secret door opens, and Morgana enters a dark hallway. She walks it through and finds three sculptures, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you spot which one? The second statue is too transparent. It's a ghost. And the third statue is moving. It's a guy pretending to be a statue. So the correct answer is the first statue. Morgana asks the statue guy, what is this place? But he refuses to answer until she solves his riddle. I speak without a mouth, and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Morgana failed to solve this mystery. What about you? The correct answer is an echo. The statue guy puts a spell on Morgana, and she falls asleep. After a while, she wakes up in a cage. He says, I'll give you one more chance to escape. Let's play a game. There are three levers. You can only choose one. If you push the first lever, the cage will fill with water in seconds. The second lever will bring two hungry tigers to your cage. And if you push the third lever, the cage will get filled with mutant mosquitoes. It's impossible to survive after their bite. Which lever should Morgana choose? She should choose the first lever. Water will simply spill through the bars of the cage. Morgana is attending a zombie biology class. Her teacher, Lady Jessica, shows the class three zombies and says, By the way, which one of these is my ex-boyfriend? Can you guess who? Take a look at Lady Jessica's tattoo. Now we know that her boyfriend has the name that starts with K. The second zombie has a name tag on his leg, according to which his name is Kai. Therefore, he's the ex-boyfriend. Morgana goes to the academy canteen and meets three guys. Magnus, Merlin, and Drake. Everyone's talking about the upcoming school prom. The next day, she receives messages from all three guys. Magnus says, Hey beauty, you're invited. My elf will deliver you an evening gown that matches my suit perfectly. Meet me in the main hall at 8 p.m. Merlin says, Hey, would you like to go to the prom with me? I heard you're an awful dancer just like me. We can meet up early and rehearse so we don't embarrass ourselves in public. 
And Drake says, Morgana, I think you're my soulmate. Let's skip the prom and have dinner at my lake house. I have a huge collection of movies. Who should Morgana choose? Magnus didn't even ask if Morgana wanted to go with him. He's too selfish. And she barely knows Drake, so it might be dangerous to go to his place. So, Morgana should choose Merlin. Morgana goes to the local store to find the perfect dress, but all the dresses are sold out. She has to choose from these four. Can you see any difference between them? The third dress has a slightly different lace decor. In the evening, Morgana is walking to the dormitory through the garden. She finds her roommate, Elle, lying unconscious in rose bushes. Teachers conclude that someone had put a sleeping curse on her. The only way to help her is to find the wizard and make him reverse the spell. Morgana questions three witnesses. The cook says, I was cleaning the kitchen and I was about to leave after that. The librarian says, Yeah, I was reading a book. It was so interesting. I spent all day indoors and I didn't pay any attention to the outer world. And the gardener says, I was watering lilies in the opposite corner of the garden. I didn't see anything. Who cursed L? It was the librarian. She got her shoes dirty in the mud while putting the spell on L in the garden. Finally, Morgana goes to the prom with Merlin. They take part in a dancing contest but fail to make it to the final. These couples are the top three finalists. Suddenly, the winning couple turns into frogs. The local doctor checks the frogs and finds out that someone had poisoned them with a magic potion. But the dancers ate the same food and drank the same drinks as everyone else at the party. Can you guess what happened here? They danced with a rose in their teeth, remember? It was drenched in the potion. Merlin offers Morgana to have a romantic tour around his great-grandfather's castle. He says, This place is abandoned. No one has entered it for 100 years. Wow, let's explore it. Morgana finds four odd details in the living room. Can you see them too? There's a laptop on the table covered with dust. There were no such laptops 100 years ago. Also, the flowers in this vase are fresh. There's a color photo in a frame on the wall. And this old beautiful clock has 13 divisions, not 12. Merlin and Morgana go to the basement. According to rumors, a very powerful magic book is hidden here. They find a large stone box. But unfortunately, it's locked. Do you have any clue how to open it? This odd boss relief with magical runes is a combination lock. The flower has six petals, which means we need to match it with a six-pointed star. The clover has four petals, just like this square has four sides. And finally, the star has five rays just like a human hand has five fingers, and voila! Merlin opens the book. Suddenly, he yells, it's a fake. Someone sneaked the original ahead of us. How did he know? There's a modern barcode on the cover of this book. Morgana and Merlin find a note in the fake book. Can you help them crack this hint? The paper is purple, and the rebus means corridor. So they should search a purple corridor. 
Morgana and Merlin wander around and find the Purple Corridor. There are three doors leading to the original magic book, but each way hides some danger. There are multiple hungry piranhas behind the first door. There's a family of vampires behind the second door. And there's an evil witcher behind the third door. Which way should they choose? Morgana and Merlin walk through the first door. Piranhas can't survive without water, so they're not dangerous. Finally, the guys find the book, but the ghost of its author yells, This book is too precious. I can't give it away to the wrong person. So you should first solve my riddle. I build castles. I tear down mountains. I make some men blind. I help others to see. What am I? The correct answer is sand. Nellie is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nellie is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nellie decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nellie walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness? The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits. So, he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too. So, he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nellie moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nellie choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. Oh. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters the local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food? The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have?
He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nelly a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. Nelly has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nelly should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nelly finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nelly can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nelly decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nelly pick the best option? There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So, Nelly should choose the second one. Nelly locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nelly passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nelly decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. After a while, Nelly wakes up with a headache. She goes to the local shop to buy some aspirin. She spots three odd things about this place. Can you see them too? There's corn on the shelf along with napkins and toilet paper. The announcement offers an 800% discount. That's too good to be true. And finally, the shopkeeper is wearing two pairs of glasses. Suddenly, the shopkeeper begins to yell, Someone stole my money! And he locks the customers inside the shop and calls the police. They arrive and question four suspects. Maya says, I came here to buy water for my 12 o'clock yoga class. I'm 20 minutes late because of you. Bob says, What's the point of stealing cash? Everyone knows that people use cards nowadays. Hmm. Lily says, This shopkeeper is a bad person. He deserved that. And Nelly replies, Sorry, I was focusing on my own purchase. I didn't see anything suspicious. After hearing that the officers had arrested one person, can you guess who? Maya. Take a look at the clock on the wall. It's only 10 a.m. She's not late. Therefore, she's lying. Nelly is walking down the street. She sees a cozy garage sale organized by Miss Green. The fixed price for any item is only $1. Amy buys an old dress. Phil takes this beautiful antique vase. And Vivienne purchases a shabby vintage suitcase. Nelly comes over to Miss Green and says, Oh. Madam, you've just sold an expensive thing for a song. What? What does she mean? Can you guess? Vivian lifts this suitcase quite easily, so it's probably empty. And besides, it has holes in the bottom. Therefore, it can't be precious. This vase isn't antique. It has a sticker from a dollar store. Although this dress is dirty and torn, it has a large, expensive brooch pinned to it, so many gemstones can't cost just one dollar. Nellie asks Miss Green if she can use her bathroom. Miss Green says, Sure, it's at the end of the corridor. Nellie is walking down the corridor and confuses the doors. Nellie ends up in this messy kitchen. Huh? The door won't open. Can you help Nellie find a key? It's in the teapot. And Miss Green enters the kitchen and tells Nellie, 
I'm a witch, young lady, and I'm going to give you a gift if you manage to solve my riddle. Oh, yes. Nelly agrees. Here's the task. It starts with T, it ends with T, and it's full of T. What is it? Can you solve this mystery? The correct answer is a teapot, again. Miss Green brings Nellie to her dusty basement and says, One of these three doors leads to a magical world, and the other two are fake. You have only one attempt to choose the correct door. Good luck! Oh, yeah! Can you help Nellie out? She should choose the third door. Take a look at the floor. Dusty footprints lead to the third door only, which means that doors one and two are fake. Nellie opens the third door and enters an enchanted forest. There are four ways to cross it, but all four passages are pretty dangerous. A hungry dragon is waiting for her on the first route. A massive fire is burning all over the second path. And the third path is basically a windowless tunnel. And the fourth passage is full of scorpions and snakes. Can you help Nellie choose the right path? She should pick the third way. The tunnel doesn't have windows, but who said it doesn't have an exit? Nellie walks the tunnel and finds herself in a beautiful castle. The guard says, This castle is yours if you manage to crack my riddle. I can fill a room, but I take up no space. What am I? Can you help Nellie win the castle? The correct answer is light. Detective Callum arrived at a jewelry store because the owner reported that someone had stolen a diamond. He didn't let any customers or a cleaning man out, so they were the main suspects. Everyone denied stealing the diamond. There were no fingerprints found. Can you help Detective Callum decide whom he should arrest? He should arrest the man and the woman wearing gloves. Since no fingerprints were left, it must be one of them, or both. Olivia sneaked into an old mansion to explore it and got trapped inside. There are three ways out, and all of them are dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made of magnifying glass, and the sun would burn anyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's a dangerous doll with knives that can come to life at any moment. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas that makes anyone's skin melt. How can Olivia escape safely? She can just leave through the first door. It's night, so the sun isn't shining. So the first way out is safe. Detective Callum was abroad, traveling by train when he heard two men arguing. One of them, Hendrix, was blaming the other, Brian, for trying to steal his suitcase. Their suitcases looked exactly the same, and Brian claimed that he had just confused the two by accident. Detective Callum asked both men to open their suitcases. Do you think it was an accident? Hendrix's suitcase is filled with clothes and electronic devices and must be pretty heavy. Brian's suitcase is almost empty, with only a pair of jeans and a book inside. It must be way lighter. And even though the bags look alike, Brian for sure knew that the bag he took couldn't be his. It was way heavier than it was supposed to be. Luna found her cousin Mia poisoned in her room and called the police. Detective Callum asked Luna what had happened. She said that she was walking past Mia's house when she saw that the light in her room was on. She walked to the window to see if Mia was there and saw her on the floor. She had a key, so she walked into the house and called the police. She didn't touch anything so that they could investigate what had happened. Detective Callum arrested Luna. Why?
She said that she saw Mia in the window. But look, the blinds are closed. If Luna hadn't touched anything, she couldn't have seen what was going on in the room. She must be lying about something. While Ms. Virginia Dell, a rich lady, was on her three-month business trip abroad, her mansion was robbed. The security was notified, and Detective Callum started the investigation. There were three people caught on the security camera, and he started interrogating them. Charlotte, Ms. Dell's cousin, said that she'd visited several times to collect the mail. Camilla, the housemaid, said that she had come three days ago to clean the house. Ismail, the gardener, said that she came every Wednesday to take care of the garden. All of them denied stealing anything. Detective Callum arrested one of them. Whom? Camilla, the housemaid. She said that she had cleaned the house three days ago. But look at the house. There's dust and dark stains. It doesn't look like the house has been cleaned recently, so she probably lied. Abigail stayed late in the office because she had a lot of work to do. She left the room to get some snacks and a coffee. Half an hour later, she returned and found out that someone had stolen her wallet. So she called the police. Detective Callum interrogated three people who were still in the office. Noel, the cleaning man, said that he had been cleaning another floor and had never stepped into Abigail's office that day yet. Sonia, the accountant, said that she had been talking on the phone with her mom. Sean, a regional manager, said that he had been in his office flooded with work. Who stole the wallet? No one. Detective Callum figured out that since Abigail went to get snacks and coffee, she must have had her wallet with her. He just recommended she should get some sleep and stop overworking. Elizabeth and her daughter Ella went abroad traveling. They were walking and shopping in one remote town when Elizabeth noticed that Ella had disappeared. She called the police and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby and they were interrogated. Layla said that she hadn't seen the girl. Madison said that she had seen the girl with her mom, but that was it. Amelia said that she had heard someone screaming, but she hadn't seen who it was. Who should be arrested? Layla, look, she's carrying Ella's purse. Gideon had a girlfriend, a sister, and two cousins. Figure out who Gideon's sister is if the cousins are saying the truth and the sister and the girlfriend are lying. Chloe. E is his girlfriend. Ruby. Chloe is lying. Skylar. Ruby is lying. Lily. Skylar is not his sister. If Chloe is telling the truth, then Lily is lying. Then, Skylar is his sister, who's also lying. So, Ruby must be telling the truth, which contradicts that Chloe is telling the truth. So, Chloe is for sure lying. Then, Ruby is telling the truth, and Skylar is lying. So, Lily is telling the truth. Two liars are Chloe and Skylar, and they're Gideon's girlfriend and sister. Lily says that Skylar isn't his sister. So Skylar is his girlfriend, and then Chloe is his sister. Scarlett just moved into her new apartment three days ago. One evening, she was reading before bed when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door, and there was a confused man who said, Oh, I'm sorry. I just moved in here earlier today, and I thought it was my apartment. Oh, oh once again, sorry, and, and good night. Then he left. Scarlett didn't believe that it was just a mistake and reported the man to the police. Why? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he had really thought it was his room, he would have tried to open it with his own keys. 
Nora lived alone in the city suburbs. She called the police and reported that someone had robbed her house and stolen her savings that she had been keeping in a pair of socks on one of her wardrobe shelves. Detective Callum arrived with the police, took a look at the room, and closed the case, claiming that the lady was lying. Why did he think so? The room was absolutely clean. If someone had robbed the house, they would have made a mess while searching for money. The person who took the money must have known exactly where it was, which is unrealistic. Mrs. Ledger is a high school history teacher. One day, she started a sudden oral test, asking students questions from the back of the book. If the students figure out the order in which she asks, they can find the answer to their question in advance. The first three people she asked were Atlas, Eleanor, and Gracelyn. There are Zoe, Luca, Sienna, and Victoria left. Can you guess who will answer which question? Mrs. Ledger is asking students in alphabetical order. So up next is Luca, then Sienna, then Victoria, and Zoe. Another day, another test. Once again, Mrs. Ledger is asking students. This time, the first ones to answer were Zoe, Luca, and Atlas. In which order will she ask the remaining students? This time, she started with people with the shortest names. There are three letters in Zoe, four in Luca, and five in Atlas. The next one is Sienna, who has six letters in her name, then Eleanor with seven letters, Victoria with eight letters, and Gracelyn with nine. Ellie found herself locked in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened. She looked around and saw a door that could have been a way out, but it required a passcode and she didn't know it. Luckily, there was a hint, 1802. 3004-0803-2611. She has just one chance, and if Ellie doesn't get it right, the dungeon will get locked forever. Can you help her decide which password is the correct one? Take a closer look. Some numbers have faded away a bit. This is probably because they had been used the most. They are 1, 2, and 6. The only code that uses all of them is the last one, 2611. It must be this one. Aurora came home after a long day at the university and was excited to eat the mint-flavored ice cream she had bought in the morning. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Aurora asked her three siblings who had eaten her ice cream, and they all denied it. Dawn said, I'm on a diet, and I haven't been eating ice cream and stuff for a week now. Everett said, Dude, I had my chips. There was no need to eat your ice cream this time. Phoenix said, First, I don't like mint ice cream, and second, I was in my room all day, and I didn't even go down once until now. Who has eaten the ice cream? It was Phoenix. Aurora never mentioned the ice cream flavor, but he still knew it. 